I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Morning, Grace Walk. How's everybody this morning? I want to welcome our online service. Uh, we thank you for tuning in every week to us. And uh, God's got a word for all of us this morning. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to talk about the Holy Spirit. And uh, uh, it, it's something that we need to desire to be led by God is the title of this sermon. And I'm going to begin in Acts chapter 19. And... <clears throat> Here we find that Paul, about 27 years after he got saved and baptized in the Holy Spirit, and maybe 20, 23 years after the Holy Spirit fell on the disciples on Pentecost, he's still praying for people to get filled with the Holy Spirit. I think that's very powerful. Now, what happened on Pentecost? Well, <clears throat> when Jesus went to the cross, all of his disciples forsook him. They left him. They went back to their old trades. They just were, sh I mean, was, I, I couldn't even imagine. But he came down. He restored them. He uh, uh, built relationship with them. And then he told them, listen, I want you to stay here. Stay here in Jerusalem until Pentecost, or what the Jewish people would call Shavuot. I didn't say that quite right, but it's something like that. <laughs> but it's a day, it's a feast of where they celebrate God giving his commandments to them. When God gave the commandments to Moses, it's a, it's a day with, it's a festival that they are just enjoying, and it's a powerful thing, and every Jew would celebrate these seven festivals, but three of them were really, that God always said, no matter where you're living, I want you to, if you at all possible, to come back to Jerusalem. Pentecost was one of those. This is why when the Holy Spirit fell at Pentecost, <clears throat> they spoke in different languages because there were different Jews from different parts of different countries who had traveled there and when they heard the disciples speaking in their known language and praising God, it touched them deeply. And so it was a powerful move. It was the beginning pretty much of the church starting and, and them going throughout all the world. But it's something we need. And baptism of the Holy Spirit, you can be saved and be led by the Spirit but you can also be baptized by the Holy Spirit where you're immersed in the Holy Spirit. See, when we get baptized, baptism simply means to die, to change color. So you take a white cloth, you dip it in uh, a blue dye or red dye, it comes out different. This is why water baptism is so powerful. And it's not a one and done. You can be baptized many times. Sometimes we just need to hear the voice of God again. But I would encourage you to seek God for the baptism of the Holy Spirit also. Now there's order to that. Paul writes the order to that in Corinthians. And, 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 and he gives direction. And, and, and different denominations translate that directions different ways, right? So, but I want you to know at the end that, that he writes to the Corinthians church on the order and how to do it. He says... Do not forsake the speaking of tongues, and I speak in tongues more than anybody. And we see this continued on. Here he is, 29 years later, he runs into some of the disciples of John who had not received Jesus Christ, 
uh, they, they knew about John's uh, 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 baptism of repentance, but Paul begins to explain to them in Acts chapter 9, 19, that, that there's something better than that, and they need to be baptized, that Jesus was the one that John was talking about coming after him. So they get baptized, water baptized, and then he lays hands on them, and the Bible says here, and the screen behind me, they begin to speak in tongues, and there's no reason for them to speak in tongues because they don't need to hear other language. It was a creative, supernatural miracle that God did right there. And that whole Acts chapter 19 is a powerful, powerful chapter. You ought to read it today. It's where God set people free of all kinds of demonic possessions. They're warring against idol makers. I mean, God is healing people in unusual ways. This is where we hear about what Paul, Paul just playing over a, a, a handkerchief or a cloth and he's sending it. And people are getting set free and healed just by them bringing that to their loved ones. Now, this is a powerful miracle, but God is a God of power and he wants us to have power and he wants us to walk in victory. So I want to talk about being led of the spirit of God because every believer needs to be led by the Spirit of God. Why? Because Jesus says, when I go, I'm going to send you the Comforter. And He is going to take my place. It's going to be like walking with Jesus, except the Holy Spirit is going to lead you now. That's why the Holy Spirit... Jesus could be in one place at one time, right? He was a God in a physical body. But the Holy Spirit can be here, it can be in China, it can be in Indonesia. It can be anywhere at the same time. We're talking about creative miracle of God. So we pick up the story here. And it says, when Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they began speaking in other languages and prophesying. All together, there were 12 people. So... We see, when, you, when we surrender our life, the Spirit of God comes in us. And we begin to be led by God. But I want you to know, if you want, God does, will never give you something you want. He will only give what you want. But if you want to go deeper, you're going to have to seek Him and God will fill you. It's a promise to God. But not everybody gets this gift. I know in some circles they think everybody gets its gifts, so they want to pray for everybody. But Paul was very clear that there are different gifts, and this is one of them. So, but if I was you, I would seek for God to fill me as you're being led by the Holy Spirit. Now, when I read Acts chapter 21, remember the title of this sermon is Being Led by God. After Paul prays for them in Acts 19, he goes on, he does a little more work, he's going traveling a little bit, and, and he's been ministering in this particular place for about three years, and he's traveling back, he feels the Holy Spirit is leading him back to Jerusalem for, again, Pentecost. Pentecost is coming, so he, he's, he's motivated to get back. He wants to be back in Jerusalem for Pentecost. So as, as you're reading this, we pick, we pick the story up in, in Acts chapter 21. He's now traveled a couple of ways on his way back to Jerusalem. And he makes a stop at, at, at this city, and the disciples there uh, uh, begin to tell him this. Once these things had come to an end, Paul, guided by the Spirit, decided to return to Jerusalem. Then in Acts 21, the next city he goes to, we found the disciples there and stayed with them for a week, compelled by the Spirit they kept telling Paul not to go to Jerusalem. So what is it? Who's right here? They're both being led by the Spirit. That's what the Bible says. It's interesting, isn't it? And there's a big debate over this. 
So I do know this, that as a believer, as Peter walked with Jesus, sometimes we can miss God. Remember, Peter tells tells God, you are God, you are God, Jesus, you are God in the flesh. And God says, flesh and blood hasn't revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. Then Jesus says, I am going to go and I'm going to lay my life down and I'm going to go to the cross. And Peter says, oh, not so, Lord. And what does Jesus do? He rebukes him. He said, get behind me, Satan. So here Peter's on cloud nine, then all of a sudden he's being called Satan. Sometimes, church, our will gets involved with God's will and we think we have the right to tell God what to do. We think we have the right to say, oh, God told me to do this or the Spirit of God told me this. And it was us. It was our self, our desires, what we wanted. Peter did not want him to go to the cross, so he told him that. No, no. Right? So I see this happening and playing out in life. Now, when I go back and I read Acts 19, it says, once these things have come in, guided by the Spirit, that phrase right there is translated in different ways by different Bible scholars. So in different translation. Now, I'm reading here. You see the uh, Acts 19, 21. It says C-E-B. Okay. That's the complete English Bible translation. But if you were read that same phrase in the Good News translation, it would say Paul made up his mind. It wouldn't say he was led by the Spirit. It would say Paul made up his mind. If you were to read it in the NIV, it would say Paul decided. In the New King James, it would say, Paul purposed in the Spirit. And you see where the confusion would come in here and why there's a debate in, in was Paul being led? Were they right? I just, all I know is somebody's wrong here. <laughs> somebody's missing God here. J.P. Phillips' translation says, uh, uh, My plans, Paul says, my plans are go to Jerusalem. And I think sometimes our flesh gets involved. So I don't know who is wrong here, but somebody's wrong here. And somebody's flesh did not want this to happen. Or there's another scenario. Is that possibly they're both right. Go back one, Victor. Thank you. So we pick up the story. The next day we left and came to Caesarea and we went on to the house of Philip, the evangelist, one of the seven, and stayed with him. He had four unmarried daughters who were involved in the work of prophecy. And after staying there for several days, a prophet named Agbus came down from Judea and he, he came to us, took Paul's belt, tied it, his own feet and his hands and said, this is what the Holy Spirit says. In Jerusalem, the Jews will bind the man who owns this belt and they will hand him over to the Gentiles. When we heard this, we and the local believers urged Paul not to go up to Jerusalem. So who's the we? Well, the author of the book of Acts was Luke. He's a pretty powerful apostle. He wrote Luke. He wrote Acts. Timothy was with him. Gaius was with him. So now he's had prophets and everything. Don't go to Jerusalem. So was, was who's missing God's will here? Interesting, isn't it? Who's not hearing from God? Or are they both hearing from God? I like what uh, 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 
This saying is, life is like a camera. Just focus on what's important. Capture the good times. Develop from the negatives. And if things don't work out, just take another shot. Sometimes in life, we're, we're not going to know completely what the will of God is. We're going to feel a strong, this is what God would have me to do. Other people might disagree with us and they might be godly people too. But sometimes we, we're not going to know exactly how God is leading us. Sometimes it's crystal clear. Other times we just don't know. Paul replied, why are you doing this? Why are you weeping and breaking my heart? I, I am ready not only to be arrested, but even to die in Jerusalem for the sake of the name of the Lord Jesus. And since we couldn't talk him out of it, the only thing we could say was, the Lord's will be done. Makes you think, right? This is one of those sermons where, oh, I got to think about this. Who are, the, who, who are the sons of God? Those who are led by His Spirit, right? So both these groups of people are, are sons of God. And there are times in your life when you're not going to know the, the know or the unknown will of God, but you're going to rely. You're relying on others maybe. You're relying on, on, on your walk with God. But there's that question mark. Now, I'm going to give you a scenario. Maybe they both were right. Or maybe Paul was full of pride because he had, you know, he's one of the most brilliant, knowledgeable, right? And we know pride, uh, 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 pride comes before destruction, right? Sometimes we, no one can tell us anything because we know what the Word of God is. We can't hear anything. We know what it says. But maybe we're looking at it in the wrong lens. So I've thought about this many times because it's debatable whether Paul was right or not. That's why there, when you study this, you look at different people saying, no, Paul, Paul was full of pride. He didn't do this. But we do know that Jesus came to him in Jerusalem when he was arrested, the Bible says the Lord appeared to him. So supernaturally, Jesus came to him and Jesus encouraged him. He said, peace, peace be with you, Paul. Uh, uh, and you're also going to go unto the Gentiles. You're going to be taken to Rome. Just what Paul had said. So that could confirm Paul that he was in the right way. Or it could mean that, that Jesus was just throwing him a, 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 a help. He was just coming to restore him, just like he restored the disciples when they walked away from him after he went to the cross, right? He came back to them. So, what if they both were right and it just wasn't God's timing for Paul to go to Jerusalem? What if God was telling him to go to Jerusalem, but not at this time? That's another thing. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Better it is to be with an humble spirit than with the, low, than with the lowly, than to, ha than to divide the spoil with the proud. I'm going to talk about the unknown and known will of God. Many times <clears throat> we're looking, we want the spirit of God to lead us. But there's certain decisions we're, they're, they're, we don't know. There's question marks behind them. You know, should, should I turn this way? Should I turn that way? Was Paul's timing simply off here? Was, was God, was this a closed door that he pushed himself through? Or was Luke and and Timothy and all his other disciples and these people loving him so much they did not want him to risk it and go, and go to Jerusalem. 
I mean, the Holy Spirit had stopped Paul before in Acts chapter 16. He was heading to a city and the Holy Spirit came and stopped him. How does the Holy Spirit stop the way he speaks to us? He says, don't go there. And Paul listened to him. Was Paul not listening to him and that's why he went there? It's debatable, right? So, we, so we, it, it, God wants us to use our mind. He wants us to think. But if we mess up, he will throw us a life preserver. So I don't know if Jesus came to Paul and said, take courage because you're also going to go into Rome because he's, given, he's restoring him back. Or if he's saying, yeah, Paul, you're in, the, you're in my perfect will here. Because we have this mindset in our theology that every single thing we do is ordered by God. Everything. Because the steps are the righteous are ordered by God, right? So does that mean he's done every evil thing too? Every bad thing, did he plan that out too? Or is that by our choices that bad comes in? By not keeping God's will. Can someone else's bad choices, evil, affect your life? I think it can. I just see God much bigger than most people see God. I believe God can take all of our will as we make choices and still make his will come to pass. I think he's bigger than that. I don't think he has to write everything down. Yeah, and this is going to happen. Oh, and then this accident's going to happen, which is going to lead him to over here. I don't think that. I think we can make our choices, good or bad, and the more we make them with the known will of God, the better life we have many times. But sometimes things just happen. And we don't understand why they happen. But God, when he appoints a time or time, he has infinite ways to make that happen. In other words, he can let every man and woman in the world make different choices and still make things happen. On his timetable, he has infinite ways to make something come to pass. He is not limited by our choices, but our choices do affect us. So being led by the Holy Spirit is we're praying to him. We're saying, God, what do you want me to do here? This is when we're not sure exactly what to do. Should I take this job or should I take this job? Should I marry this person or should I marry another person? And if you're looking for a perfect mate, I've already been taken, so. <laughs> Why are you smiling so much? We all have issues. We all have difficulties. It's in those decisions that we actually grow. It, it, it's when I make a mistake that I don't want to make that mistake again. And if I do make it again, it's really on my mind. So I'm working, I'm thinking about it, I'm acknowledging it, I'm giving it to God to help me make changes in my life. Not every decision we make is, is a sinful decision, but we have to learn. God wants us to think. He wants us to gain wisdom and knowledge. Psalm says, teach me to do your will. We Teach me. How does he teach us? By reading the word of God. Then we learn what he says is right and wrong. I had my own philosophies of what was right and wrong. But when I got saved, God began to wash my mind and change what I said was right and wrong to what his was as I submitted my will unto his will. Sometimes you're not going to know which way to go. What I do personally when I don't know, I just say, God, you bless me to the right or you bless me to the left. Whichever way I go, you bless me because you are a good God. Now, sometimes if God wants me to end up here and I choose to go to the left, 
I might end up way over here, way over here, but because I'm submitted to God, he's going to keep bringing me back here up to here. It might have been the longer route, but he's going to bring me back here because I trust he will do that. So, there are no, that God's known will is in the scriptures. We know what, what his known will. Don't gossip. Love God and others. We know that we don't always want to do God's will, but we know what it says. Don't murder. Got that one down. Rejoice always, although at times in my life, my anger has won. You know, one time in my life, I've been saved, I don't know, a couple of years. And uh, <clears throat> Pastor Joe had finally led me to the Lord. I've been living for God. I was even teaching a Bible study. And <clears throat> I did some work for a contractor, and he would not pay me. And, you know... <laughs> I finally went to his house and said, you're going to pay me. <clears throat> well, he disagreed, and somehow we got in a fight. Bible study leader Fred, you know. I witnessed to you on the job side, but now I'm going to bust you in the face. <laughs> So that happened, and he paid me. <laughs> Could have worked out just the opposite. <laughs> My other brother, Casey, was he managed a bar in Prescott, Arizona. He didn't want to hear about the Jesus, but I was always sharing Jesus with him. All of a sudden, Casey came to my house. He never came to my house. He showed up, a little smirk on his face. He said, how's this uh, Jesus thing going for you, friend? I said, it's good. God is good. You need to give your life to God. Then he started telling me about the fight I'd just been in. <laughs> Somehow that fight ended up in the bar and people knew about it. So we've got, to, when I'm in my flesh, I'm rarely doing God's will. We know God's will is that we be generous. The scriptures, as the scripture says, now, whenever it says at scripture, it's always referring back to the Old Testament because the New Testament hadn't become scripture yet. So when Peter or anybody who's writing right here, he's quoting Psalms. He says, as the scripture says, if you want to enjoy life and wish to see good times, you must keep, keep from speaking evil and stop telling lies. You must turn away from evil and do good. You must strive for peace in your heart. Now, that's a decision you have to make. To strive to press in for peace. It's a decision you have to, to show someone else grace and forgive them. To be loving and kind. Honest. Here's another story in my life. I'd led my, uh, 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 someone to the Lord. He was working for me. We're driving in my old beat up van. And I drive past a house and there was a washer and dryer. Now I had a washer and dryer that just went out. I'm a young man. I got two little kids and, and I'm struggling to make ends meet. And I looked over at him, the person I led the Lord, he is about three months old in the Lord. And I looked over to him and I said, too bad we're saved. <laughs> too bad we're saved because we could load those up right now and be gone. <laughs> and in his simple wisdom this new convert looked over to, to me and he said yeah it's too bad we're saved going to heaven isn't it <laughs> it's 
Sometimes it's just, it's just common sense. It's just do the next right thing. You might not know the scripture, but just do the next right thing. You know, what really helped me when I was a, a brand new convert, often I would ask myself, would Jesus do this? Would Jesus go here? And, you know, without even knowing the scripture, I knew on the inside, no, he, he, he would not be doing that. He would not say that, and he would not go there. So the Holy Spirit works with God's word, not against it. The Holy Spirit will never lead you to break a commandment of God. Never. That's your flesh getting involved. Galatians says, I say be guided by the Spirit and you won't carry out your selfish desires. A person's selfish desires are set against the Spirit and the Spirit is set against one's selfish desires. They are opposed to each other, so you shouldn't do whatsoever you want to do. God's known will. Some of the questions that you can ask yourself... Is this decision, this fork in the road, which I don't know God's will, what he wants me to do this, is this going to bring peace into my life? Would this choice counterdict God's truth? Sometimes we are so full of anxiety of making the wrong choice. And fear's not from God. You know, if you turn this way and it takes you forever to get back up here, God will bring you back. If your heart's right, he's going to lead you. I mean, I don't know if Paul was right or wrong, but I do know that Jesus came to him while he was arrested. Because Paul's heart was right. I'm willing to give my life. I'm willing to die for Christ. His heart was right. Whether he was in the right timing or not, We'll not know until we get to heaven, right? Are any fears guiding my decision? Have I sought godly wisdom? Have I went to somebody I respect and asked them, is this a good financial decision? You know, your success. Don't go to the person that is the same boat as you are. <laughs> go to somebody that knows a little more and ask them, is this a wise decision? Should I do this in my life right now? Should I start this business right now? Or should I wait? Eventually, as God's word gets in us, we begin to mature. We begin to change. And we quit trying to fit into the world's standards and belief system. When I got saved, my belief system was whatever felt good to me that seemed to be right on the way I wanted to live and live my life. God had to wash my mind. He had to renew my mind so that I could be transformed by his word. You can't be transformed. So many times in our life, we want someone to lay hands on us and change our character. Now, there's supernatural healing power. But many times, the only way that character is changing is through repentance and saying, you know what? I messed up. I'm going back here. I'm going to do right. I shouldn't have done that. I knew. I didn't feel I should have done that. And you turn around and you start doing right. It says, <clears throat> do, not be conform, do not conform yourself to the standards of this world. The standards of this world change every generation. Some generations would say, that's sin. And they weren't sinners. And they're saying, this is not right. You shouldn't do it. Next generation, they're saying, oh, this is okay. The standard changed. But God's standards never change. If he says, 
What he says is right and wrong is always that way. But let God transform you inwardly in your thinking by a complete change of your mind. Then you'll be able to know the will of God, what is good and what is pleasing to Him and is perfect. This is why you've got to wash your mind with the Word of God. You've got to get the Word of God in you. When you're driving, sometimes turn the radio off. Just listen to some of the Bible. In your, when, when you're going, take time. You know, if you're too busy, take time on your uh, uh, commuting, whatever you're doing. Make sure you're washing your mind with the Word of God. Being obedient to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes the Holy Spirit is not going to lead you to the place you want to go. He's going to lead you to the wilderness. He led Jesus to the wilderness to be tempted to grow. Sometimes the Holy Spirit is going to lead you to share uh, 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 who he is with someone else maybe it's a perfect stranger maybe it's someone you don't know but he's going to lead you and you've got to listen you've got to say God give me courage to speak up to say what you want me to do Galatians says those who belong to Christ Jesus has, they have crucified who crucifies the, their flesh am I to crucify your flesh who crucifies your flesh and your selfish desires? That's you. That's you making choices that would, this is what God would do, and I, this is my desire to do this, but I ain't going to do that. I'm going to die to my desires and my wants and do what the Word of God says to do. With its pat, whoop, go back. With its passions and desires, we live by the Spirit. Let's follow the Spirit. Remember, Jesus says, I go and I send you a comforter. This comforter will be like me. It's going to lead you just like I led you before. So we need, we need to let God, the Holy Spirit lead us, and he's going to lead us in God's will. Our responsibility we have a responsibility to allow him to lead us. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and to help you and be with you forever. The Holy Spirit's going to intercede for you. Just like Jesus interceded for the disciples. When they were on a boat, like last week, I, I used the illustration, they're on the boat and, and, and the storms of life are there and they think they're going to drown. Who interceded for them? Jesus did. When you're in a storm in your life, the Holy Spirit will intercede on your behalf. He's for you. He wants to help you. With that said, why heads are bowed and eyes are closed in here and no one's looking around. This morning, maybe you came to church and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ. You, you know about God. You know there's something that, that you need. But to this morning, you need a Savior. You need someone to help you in your life. And while heads are bowed and eyes are closed in here, if that's you, I want you to just lift your hand up and put it back down. You, amen. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see those hands going up. Others of you, you've allowed your, 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 your self-desires, your will to be leading you, and, and you've created a mess. I want to tell you, Jesus wants to be your Savior. He wants to throw you a life raft. He, he wants to put you back on the boat. He wants to calm your storm, but you've got to surrender to him. And you're sitting in here this morning. You, you love God, but you don't understand. He, he wants to touch you this morning. Just lift your hand up and put it back down. 
Some of you, 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 want, you want to know the Holy Spirit in a deeper way where, 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 where the Holy Spirit comes in you and out, changes you on a creative, supernatural way on the inside. You want to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Just lift your hand up and put it back down. Many, many, many hands. Now I'm going to ask you if you raise your hand to pray a prayer with me. And I'm going to ask the whole congregation, if you're watching online, I, I want you to pray along with this. I want you to say these words. Say, Jesus, today I surrender my life. Lead me by your Spirit. Forgive me for all my sins, all my bad decisions. Heal me and change my life. I choose to make you my Lord this morning. I thank you that you shed your blood for all my sins. That this is a gift you've given me and I receive it. In Jesus' name. Amen.